When you think about the evolution of whales, it's pretty f***ing nuts. Evolved from this, alive 53 million years ago. Dip their toes in the water and boom, went aquatic. Then boom, big mega aquatic. And then there's seals, who evolved from something like this, alive 21 million years ago. Totally different land ancestor, but with a very similar outcome. Life, back in the water, almost. Yeah, seals and their relatives aren't fully, totally aquatic. They still spend a lot of time on land, bopping around, looking like it's uncomfortable, while still holding the title of apex predator in some of their waters. What does this all mean? Are seals just halfway through their journey of becoming something more like a whale? Today we'll be exploring their evolutionary journey. I'll introduce you to their ancestors, strange specimens in the seal lineage, and answer the question Question, is whale their final form? Before we get started, I don't know if you noticed, I decided to wear the cropped shirt for you because I didn't show you what it looks like on. I told you it's my favorite shirt, so I decided to wear it today. I like it a lot. It's literally my favorite shirt. And I am gonna be doing a cropping tutorial. So if you get this shirt, and by the way, there's like a couple more days to get this shirt. If you get this shirt and you wanna crop it, I'll show you how in different ways. It's all fringy, which is nice. Yeah, make sure to get one, ding, all right. Let's get the general information out of the way. Seals are just one of many groups of semi-aquatic mammals collectively known as the pinnipeds, which means feather-footed. Take one look at their flippers and yeah, that's fucking feather feet. They look like feet constructed of thick, wet feathers. And the pinnipeds include three main families. One, otoriety, like notoriety, but otoriety. The sea lions and the fur seals, collective. Fuck, what was that? Nico, what are you doing? Nico's knocking shit over. Everything's fine. Oh, now you wanna go? She got super into fetch. See? She's like a dog, but a very small cat. Okay, anyway, Odoriety, the sea lions and the first seals. Objectively, the cutest of the three, can't deny it. They have those little ear flaps and can walk on all fours on land. They're like little dogs, but they're called sea lions and fur seals, but they're like little water dogs. Odebenity, the walruses, the walri. That's probably not correct, but walruses, too long. Walri, only one species left, but what a guy. Giant tusks, massive mustache, and really into clamps. And last but definitely not least, Bocity, the true seals. These are your classic seals. 19 living species, big and small, from the elephant seal to a seal that I will not reveal yet in case you don't know what it is because it's so fucking small and cute. Seals don't have ear flaps, you can't walk. They just undulate. A characteristic I know you bitches are all over. Pow, 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 pinnipeds. They're about a quarter of today's marine mammal species. And they're found pretty much in every cold sea and a few warm ones as well. They're the edge lords of the natural world as they live on the edge of things. Beaches are the edge. Ice is also the edge. Rocky coasts edge. And they've got plenty of adaptations in order to do so. Blubber for warmth, flippers for speed, a flexible spine for zipping through kelp forests or cruising under arctic ice. They are the phenomenal pinnipeds. So where exactly do they fit in the evolutionary tree? Well, it's actually weirdly muddy as fuck. You wouldn't expect that. I, I wouldn't expect that. I grew up near the beach, so harbor seals were just like probably what deer are in most other parts of the US, just all over the place. Or like what pigeons are to people in New York. So I don't know, you wouldn't expect it to be muddy as fuck. We do know that they're definitely in the order carnivora, your cats, your dogs, your bears, weasels, etc. the carnivorans. But who exactly their closest relatives are is something scientists have been arguing about for over a hundred years. Before genetic evidence, when you were just looking at a bundle of bones, the answer was bears. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Bears do not. What is going on? Seals and other pinnipeds have a lot of skeletal similarities to bears. So the answer was bears, case closed. For a long time, but you know genetic evidence, fuck shit up and threw mustaloids into the mix. Your weasels, your honey badgers, also your otters. Obviously otters make you say, yeah, that makes sense from a very surface level point of view. So the latest massive genome scale studies mostly support a closer tie to the weasels, but some evidence still points to bears and bears and weasels are closer related too. So it's like pretty much sold on weasels, I would say, but I wanted to provide the muddy as fuck context anyway. That's what we do here. We talk about shit that's muddy as fuck. Regardless, the seals have gone down a much different evolutionary path than their closest relatives. They have streamlined bodies, flippers instead of paws, thick blubber, like I said, long and sensitive whiskers to detect movements of fish in the water, pretty sick. And the thought of not having them around for future generations makes me sick. But no need to panic. People are working on the ground right now to make sure that doesn't happen, including a conservation group called Planet Wilds that you can literally get involved with yourself. I'll tell you more about their latest mission at the end of the video. If you don't know them already, you're gonna love them. But we've got a long ways to go before that, because the story of seals starts sometime like 
24 to 30 million years ago. Actually, this isn't even specifically seals yet. This is pinniped shit, primitive pinniped shit. Our story starts with a little weasel looking fossil called Pu- Puli- Puila. Oh, princess. Puila Darwini. Puila Darwini. It was discovered in the Arctic Circle of Canada by a team led by paleobiologist Natalia Rybchinsky back in 2007. Nat Geo said she named it Puila Darwini after an Inuit word referring to a young seal and some obscure biologist. I love when Nat Geo gets chummy. As you can see, Puila Darwini is a very long word. I'm gonna call it Pepe. Pepe is very pre pinniped No flippers, seemingly no aquatic adaptations at all. But that is not the case. The paper announcing their discovery listed out a ton of these teeny adaptations that would, of course, as time went on, become more and more extreme. These include a forelimb with a prominent deltopectoral ridge on the humerus, a posterodorsally expanded scapula, a pelvis with relatively short ilium, a shortened femur, and flattened phalanges, suggestive of webbing. In more better words, Strong front legs for to swim, shoulder bones better shaped for to paddle, shoulder hips and thigh bones for moving in water, and flat toes and webbed feet probably. I'd lead with that. So, this little guy clearly represents some of the earliest steps towards life back in the water for this lineage. Reminiscent of the first steps of whales, for sure. Pachycetus. I'm gonna go ahead and say what we're all thinking. Definitely not as grotesque looking. Pachycetus was grotesque. Brother, uh... What's that? These early members of both of these lineages were not spending all of their time, or probably even most of their time in the water. Decent chunk of time, but not all their time. They were just slowly starting to take advantage of an untapped habitat. Shorelines, very shallow water systems to hunt in, or even escape from predators in. All right, next up, Potomotherium, alive about 23 million years ago. Looks like a mix between an otter and a mink, but it is neither otter nor mink. It is a primitive pinniped, definitely more streamlined for a more aquatic lifestyle. One of the coolest things about them is their whiskers. In 2023, scientists looked at the regions of their fossilized brains by making 3D scans and endocasts of their fossil skulls, and then focusing on the surface features that show where different brain regions were located. They compared the size and shape of a particular part of the brain called the coronal gyrus, which is known to receive sensory signals from the head, especially the whiskers. They were able to figure out that even this early on in primitive pinniped evolution, the Tomotherium was probably using its whiskers to find and hunt prey underwater. Over time, the prototype seal body became more and more recognizable and just got long and flat. Webbed feet became flippers. The backbone became a compromise between flexibility for swimming and strength for hauling onto rocks. Their heads changed too. Early seals had long, narrow skulls for catching squids and fishes, while others developed robust jaws and teeth for tackling hard-shelled specimens. And their whiskers got sensitive as fuck, able to detect the turbulence of a single fish swimming by, even in murky waters. By about 15 million years ago, the pinnipeds were spread out all over the Northern Hemisphere and then diverged into the three groups we know and love today, which means, the first true seals, but not without a fucking headache first. For a long time, the earliest definitive seal was considered Afrofoca, represented by a single fossil specimen found in Libya back in 2014. The jawbone showed many similarities to that of modern seals. Enough for the authors to conclude back then that they had found one of, if not the, earliest true seals. I wrote about Afrofoca in most of the papers I used to research this video, but those papers were from 2023 or earlier, because just last year, in 2024, Afrofoca got booted. Turns out it was not a seal, and instead an anthracothere, an extinct relative of hippos and whales, and has been assigned to the genus Afromyrix. Sad. So what do you know? The beginning of the seal lineage is also muddy as fuck, but I have a couple other prehistoric seals for your lineup today. Hadrochiris alive about six million years ago, living on the lovely coast of what is now Peru, with massive skulls and powerful jaws built for crushing hard body prey, mollusks, echinoderms, shellfish galore, or maybe a crusher of bones. Hard to say, just definitely able to crush through hard shit. And more petite was Prepusa. It got to two feet long max. Very cute. And they might remind you of a seal alive today. The Lake Baikal Seal, one of the smallest true seals alive today. Yeah, bitch. Don't you just wanna Squeeze it! Turns out we know a lot more about the Lake Baikal seal than we do about Prepusa. There's really not shit about Prepusa. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We don't really know much about them. Just the fact that they existed and their name sounds like Papusa. And you know what? More fun to talk about tiny seals alive today than ones that are extinct, in my opinion. And I bet they piqued your interest a lot more than fucking Papusa. So, the Baikal seal found exclusively in Russia's massive Lake Baikal. No other seal lives so far from the coast. By the way, not totally sure how their ancestors made the journey. Once they got there, they adapted into a lineage that hits all of our objectively cute characteristics. Small, big eyes, fluffy, 
and round. They get to about four to four and a half feet long and somewhere between 100 to 280 pounds. Genetically, their closest living relatives are the ringed seals, also very cute and round. They probably split off from them at least 500,000 years ago. Maybe your brain is going in the same direction as mine. Is this a bizarro island rule situation? A lake is essentially an island separated from the ocean by land. It's an inverse island rule. Are they tiny due to bizarro island rule? Maybe. Gotta be honest, this is a little tangent. I did not come prepared with an island rule conversation for this video. Now I'm thinking maybe bizarro island rule would be an interesting video if it exists, but it must exist. If it exists on land, it must exist in the water. I'm gonna figure it out. If you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, island rule is this tendency for species on islands to get weird as fuck. It's a fuck around and find out situation. A lot of the times they get fun sized. The hobbit people, Sicilian pygmy elephants, etc. But sometimes they get bigger. It just depends. Island rule is weird as fuck. That's all we know about island rule. It's weird as fuck. So looking into it in the aquatic sense would be interesting. I'm adding it to the list. Regardless of whatever is going on here, the Baikal seal probably wouldn't exist if seals went fully aquatic. Probably. So be grateful they didn't. I guess. Then on the other end of the seal spectrum, we've got the elephant seal, northern and southern. Southern are the biggest. These bitches are bigger than walruses and arguably much more grotesque. There's definitely no whales that have the same essence as an elephant seal. This is just unusual. Male southern elephant seals can get to like 19 feet long, dude. Oh God, that's bigger than this room. Oh my God. Okay, sorry. I hate that. Ugh. Okay, males use their proboscis, i.e. that facial trunk, as an amp, makes them loud as fuck. Makes them sound like Frank in that one episode of It's Always Sunny. What? <laughs> Can't even think about it. They also obviously use their trunk for sexual display. Also thermal regulation, also water retention. It's a godforsaken one-stop shop. But they do have one thing I'm super into, a world record for the longest dives of the SEAL group. They can go 5,000 feet below the surface of the ocean and stay down there for up to two hours. That is sperm whale level type shit. That's longer than most whales, I think. That's fucking crazy. And so, back to the original question. Are seals just a transitional form? Are they some halfway stop between land mammals and whales? A step on the stairway to full aquatic living. Drum roll, please. Nope. Nope. Seals are not on the way to becoming whales. They're not unfinished in evolutionary development. That's not even how evolution works in the first place. Like nothing's on the way to becoming something else because everything just happens. Shit just unfolds. Things play out. There's no direction. Evolution isn't linear or a race or looking to create some sort of metals for best adapted to the water. Like I said before, it's a massive, wildly branching bush or tree, whatever you want, filled with side roads, dead ends, twists, returns. Seals are a branch that found a way to master two worlds at once and then double down on what worked for them for millions and millions of years. They're not a midpoint to the final form of something else. They are their own final form, a unique, vibrant lineage that has their own shit going on. Sure, their life on land looks forced and uncomfortable, hard to look at, but they don't feel that way. At least I don't think so. They don't feel that way because that's just what they are. So, and despite the drastic and jarring difference between the tiny seals and the elephant seals, they all share plenty of traits that make them perfectly built for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Like I said, the streamlined shape, slicing through water, thick, thick blubber to insulate against freezing seas, and to store energy for long dive or starving times. Limbs suited for swimming, powerful back flippers, modified lungs and blood that allow them to store oxygen and tolerate deep extended dives. It's just seal things, typical seal things. So. Let me introduce you to a few more species with these typical seal things. Starting off with the legendary leopard seals, the apex predators of the seal world. Run, 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 run. Literally a leopard seal, maybe more like a lion seal or a tiger seal, because leopards are, eh, whatever. Leopard seals have massive reptilian heads and jaws powerful enough to crack through penguin bones and even go after other seals. Their teeth are serrated, which is always horrific business, and their hunting style is rapid and ambush-based. In Antarctica, they rule the pack ice, hunting everything from krill to fur seal pups, which, by the way, fur seals, cute, but not true seals. So not on the list. Remember, they're with the sea lions, so. But what might be my new favorite is the ribbon seal. I did not know these seals existed before I started researching for this video, and I am stoked. They are so sick looking. They look very mid-century mod, no. They just look like, oh. Uh, they look like one of those mass-produced paintings I've seen at World Market, and not in a bad way. Like, they're so sick looking. Mass-produced a ribbon seal and spend much of their lives in the drifting packed ice of the Bering and Okotsk. 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 
seas. Elusive, rarely spotted on land. Scientists didn't even know much about their behavior until satellite tagging became a thing. Ribbon seals are solitary, loners on the ice. Perfectly camouflaged and armored for a life that's 90% water, 10% lying on floating ice chunks. Next, the hooded seal. What the fuck is this? Didn't know about this one either. Their name comes from the obvious fucking feature, a muscular inflatable nasal sac or hood on the male's head. When relaxed, it just looks like a big pouch on the nose. But when a male is excited, threatened, or showing off, he can inflate this hood. He inflates it, blowing it up into a bright red balloon. Can cover the entire top of their head, even cover one of their eyes. It's used for intimidating other males and picking up chicks, as you would unfortunately expect. You wanna see it? I don't wanna see it! Hooded seal pups are really, really cute though. They're known as bluebacks, which sounds like a slur, but refers to their stunning blue, silvery fur. They're cute as fuck but then eventually they turn into this. And then there's the gray seal, very cute. They were once hunted to near extinction, but they have made a huge recovery in places like the UK, the Baltic, and even along the Eastern seaboard of the US. Thanks to conservation and protection efforts done by tons of different groups in the area. And Planet Wild has partnered up with one of them. If you're not familiar with Planet Wilds, they're a nature protection organization that partners globally on projects to protect wildlife, restore ecosystems, and tackle environmental crises. They document every project with a video report right here on YouTube so you can see the impact. This time they've teamed up with the Marine Rescue and Research Center on Poland's Hell Peninsula. It's called Hell Peninsula. It's been working for over 30 years to study the Baltic and care for marine life. So here's a situation. Rising temperatures are causing sea ice in the Northern Baltic to vanish. So gray seals can't give birth on stable ice anymore. Instead, pups are being born on land where they face predators, human disturbance, and unstable conditions that leave a lot of them stranded or washed ashore, often hundreds of miles from home. These pups are way too young to survive on their own. And because gray seals are apex predators in the Arctic, when they suffer, the whole marine food web suffers too. And here's where the Planet Wilds community stepped in. Thanks to member contributions, they've helped fund three brand new seal enclosures, giving stranded pups safe spaces to recover, an upgraded 24 seven monitoring system so caretakers can keep constant track of their health, and seven specialized tracking devices, which let researchers follow pup after release and understand how they reintegrate into the wild. The goal is to make sure these rescued pups don't just survive in the hospital, but get the full second chance they deserve out in the ocean. And the best part is, all of this was made possible by Planet Wild members which could be you. Their whole model is crowdfunding for nature. There's no set price for the membership. So for as little as the cost of a single taco, you're directly funding conservation projects like this. And every month their field team documents the work on site with a video report. So you can see exactly how your support is helping. I've been a member for more than a year now because it's positive, it's hopeful, it's important. And it feels good to know you're making a direct difference. If that doesn't sound good enough yet, I have one more incentive for you. The first 100 people to sign up get their first month completely comped by me. So you can already start making a difference now. See the impact in less than 30 days. If you don't feel like sticking with it after that, no worries. Cancel anytime, no questions asked. Go sign up at the link in the description using code LINDSAY29 and let's support projects like this that give SEALs a second chance. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video, which I think, if I am correct, is the final episode, for now, of the history of cats. The lost lineages, cats, and cat kind of relatives that are very closely related to them, that are essentially another cat that you might have never heard of. Check out the merch, get it cropped, I'll show you how. Check out Patreon for behind the scenes updates on our Discord server. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya! But that is not the case. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs>